check it out on this beautiful afternoon we're going to be swapping out this nest hello video doorbell gen 1 with this brand new google video doorbell which is battery powered but you can wire it in let's go Now, if you're not already aware, the Google Nest video doorbell is a smart device, which means it notifies you when someone presses a doorbell or not, or if they simply decide to stand there or knock on the door as standard, or if a courier leaves a parcel in front of the door, it notifies you when these events have been triggered. So when you're out and about, make sure you don't get caught out, make sure you've got a data plan so you can actually receive these notifications. And that brings me to this video sponsor, Smarty. Smarty's got some amazing big data value plans, like 30 gig for 10 pounds a month, and they're currently running a offer for 20% off, 50 gig for 12 pounds a month, and if you need unlimited data, 20 quid for unlimited data that's 20 pound for unlimited data that's a lot of data as well as fast 4g and 3g data you can get unlimited calls and texts unlimited tethering in the uk with no speed caps and there's no yearly contracts or commitments at all it's just a flexible month by month plan that you can cancel at any time so check them out links in the description box below smarty.co.uk forward slash plans Noise My doorbell is not wired up to an internal battery, but it goes directly to the mains. I'll leave a link to this adapter down in the description box below. So switch off any electricity going to your doorbell. Now we've got the power off. We can go underneath and take the front of the doorbell off here. So if you look underneath, this is the pinhole. You've got to put it in at a certain angle. So and you can see the front of the doorbell just lifts away there. So now I should be able to just pull this off and it has come away from the face plate there, as you can see. So I'm just gonna slowly jimmy that away. As the electricity is off, I can safely remove both the screws leading to the power adapter. And now for the back plate. It just lift away there we go you can use the template that came with the doorbell to mark out your screws obviously I've still got a screw hole from the first doorbell but this is where the second screw hole is gonna go just got a spare envelope here I'm gonna mask it off underneath because I don't want grip type of dust going everywhere even though it is outside Screw holes look good, so we can put the base plate on. As I say, I'm gonna use the one on the angle first, and we're good to start the screws off. Now for the actual doorbell unit itself. If you're wondering how to get the doorbell unit out, if you want to, for whatever reason, wanna change it or something's broke, this tool that came with the device plugs, you push it into that little hole, and you should see that little button there going in and out and then you should come away from the actual bracket. First things first, we need to get these little screws out so we can wire it in. I think we're gonna be okay, although the wires are a little bit short. And now to click it in place, the nub at the bottom goes in there. So let's, there you go, clicks in place. Time to switch the power on. Oh, it's far too bright outside. So next, get your Nest application up, go to your settings and then scroll down to add product. It'll ask you for the QR code scan the QR code card that came with your device. And then it says, you're in the wrong app, go to Google Home app. So here we are, click the plus in the corner and we're gonna do setup device. And we just simply go through uh, the setup prompts here and update the device. Pretty straightforward, really. As you approach the doorbell, you can see it's illuminating the ring there, indicating that this is a button, but it does look clean. You can see it a little bit better since the sun is not beating directly down on top of it now. You can see this is more of a vertical view because you can see the floor mat on the floor. The resolution on this thing is 1280 by 960. How does it look? How does it look? So this is what the Google video doorbell looks like at night time. 
looks pretty clear doesn't it sky is pretty clear today you should be able to see again pretty much from the floor mat even if I raise my arms you should be able to see pretty much everything you won't be able to see to your left hand side as much because as we talked about in the daytime video it's quite narrow but you can see pretty much head to toe maybe what do you think certainly pretty clear night here not too cold but do let me know what it sounds like and looks like in the comments section down below but again ace with your pet detective whoa I'm really struggling to find a quiet place to film today and I'm not sure if you can actually hear that. You definitely heard the rooster. I think you definitely heard the rooster but hey. So this is day two with the Google Nest video doorbell battery version. I'm running it in wired mode for the time being. I will be swapping over to battery mode just to see how the battery performs because it does have a 6000 milliamp hour rated battery. So. I'm quite eager to see how that will perform, particularly with uh, my setup, because I'll get a lot of activity on mine with kids going to school, people coming and going, blah, blah, blah. So I do get a lot of activity. So I want to see what that battery performs like. So on day two, with this Google Nest doorbell, what do we know so far? Well, Nest doorbell, it's labeled, but is this false advertising? Because the Nest doorbell doesn't actually work with the Nest application. During the setup, the Nest application hands you off to the Google Home application and that's where you see all your footage, that's where all the settings are. When you completely set up the doorbell and you go into the Nest application, there's nothing there. There's no settings, there's no video footage, there's nothing at all for you to see. And Google have actually confirmed this, that all new devices will be going to the Google Home application, not the Nest. I'm not sure how I feel about that because the Nest application is really slick, it's really intuitive, it's just it's just great uh, compared to the Google Home application, which is a bit of a mishmash, loads of settings everywhere. It's not really intuitive. Um, so the plus side is that that's a software thing and Google's a software company, so they should be able to make the Google Home application better. And I'm not sure as well how I feel about all my previous devices, Google uh, Nest cameras that I've got are not available in the Home application. So. I've got some devices that are within the Nest application and I've got this new Nest doorbell, which is only in the Google Home application. So I have to go into two separate applications to see video footage, two separate applications to see the settings. Hopefully Google can get this ironed out pretty quickly in a software update. Next up is the event history. I like this a lot because with the Google Nest doorbell, you get three hours worth of free event based history. So Three hours previous to any event occurring, you can go back and see what that event uh, displayed for absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything at all, which is a change because previously on other Nest devices, if you wanted to see event based history recorded, then you would have to have a Nest aware subscription. But not with this bad boy, you get up to three hours worth of free event based history. Now, anything more than three hours, you can get up to 60 days. Uh, using a Nest Aware subscription. I've got a Nest Aware subscription uh, for my cameras, but I do like that. that. Out the box, you don't have to pay anything extra and you get free three hours worth of event-based history. Secondly, continuous video recording. Although I've got this wired in, you cannot continuously video record from this device. It's purely event-based video recording even though I've got it wired in. That seems to be uh, a limitation of this device. And Google have confirmed that this is event-based video only, not continuous video recording. So do bear that in mind. I wanted to have both options. I wanted to have event-based history and continuous video recording. So I can pick and choose what I look at. Um, so I may go back to the wired previous generation Nest Hello video doorbell. I'm going to see how I'll go because I really, really do like the video quality of uh, this particular doorbell. The clarity and the colours are just mwah, beautiful. Thirdly, 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 is thirdly a word? Well, third thing I've noticed is the sensitivity of the camera. If you don't have the sensitivity uh, on the default medium settings, sometimes 
it can not give you the build up to the event, if that makes any sense. So the sensitivity of the camera of how quickly it turns on to record what's happening. Sometimes the, someone can run up to the door, uh, post a letter, put a parcel through and leave and you will only you will miss the first couple of seconds of them entering the, the zone that you're targeting. I'm using activity zones because I don't want you to capture birds flying or wind moving the trees about and that kind of stuff. Um, and that's another thing actually. Activity zones in the Google Home application, it's not intuitive at all how you set it up, but that's one of my gripes with the Google Home application versus the Nest. In Nest it's really easy, but hey, I digress. Um, the sensitivity on the camera on this, um, by default, you may lose a couple of seconds uh, of the beginning of a particular event, say. So to compensate for that, I've increased the sensitivity to maximum settings on the camera. So it should be able to capture absolutely everything, um, even from someone walking down to my drive or someone posting a letter or the kids coming home or whatever. It should capture absolutely everything. But I am conscious that once I switch to battery mode, how well that will affect the longevity of the battery of one charge. And apparently it takes about five hours, five hours to charge um, the Google Nest uh, video doorbell with its 6,000 milliamp hour rated battery. So I'm not gonna unwire it all. I'm just gonna turn the power off at the plug uh, and we'll switch over to battery mode. Google Nest video doorbell now running on battery power. Clarity and picture colors absolutely awesome on this thing. How does it look? I can see it glowing away. And how does my voice sound with that car going past? Is can you hear the car? Can you hear my voice? You should be able to see my feet at least because you can see the doormat. You can see my arms waving around. Whoa. How does it look? So a full 24 hours after we started going to battery mode on this uh, Google Nest video doorbell, we started off with 62% battery because we didn't fully charge it. A full day later, we're down to 52%. So this was capturing absolutely everything inside the zone and absolutely everything outside of the zone. And that tells you, you could, or for at least my circumstances, about 10% a day. Uh, but we're going to be switching this up for the next 24 hours, only capturing events within the zone, and we'll see how we go with that. When you're using the Google Nest video doorbell in battery mode and you go into the home application, load up the doorbell, it takes you to this screen here where it shows you the battery life straight away and not going straight into the live video because it doesn't want to use up that battery life just to show you live video. When you've got it in uh, wired mode, it takes you straight to live video. So you can see it's just ticked down from 51 to 50% here. And I just want to show you, if I go to settings here, what my event zones are like. So I've got a zone one set, so we go into that. And you can see I've got a zone one set here and it's alerting on absolutely everything. And it's got outside of zone one here as well, where again, it's alerting on absolutely everything outside of that zone. So once this buffer's in here, you can see that pink color is zone one. So it's alerting on absolutely everything inside of uh, that zone one. You can see I've got everything tipped except for motion at the bottom. And if I go back again and show you outside of zone one, it's got absolutely everything here as well. So this is what it's been alerting on for the last 24 hours. And it's consumed about 10% of battery life so catching absolutely everything as it occurs. So we're going to swap this round to just zone one and see how that affects it over the next 24 hours. And while I'm here, I'm just going to go back again and go to history because I also want to show you, and I did not mention this earlier, that this Nest Video doorbell battery version does not continuously record video. It only does event based notification so if I scroll here you can see where there's nothing captured it just says no events detected and as soon as an event is detected you can see I'm standing right next to the doorbell there it displays the event and if you really want to you can go to event details hit the download button to download it straight to your device you can't actually do this on a computer Ooh, you can hear me talking there 
Someone's at the front door, second doorbell. Yo, another 24 hours later, running on battery mode only, and we're down 5% from the previous days at this rate it's going to last around about 20 days if the amount of activations that occur stays consistent so again your mileage will vary and i just want to go into settings just to show you what i'm currently using so if we go into battery here you can see it estimates four days left um, based on the 44 percent that i have you can turn off um, or turn on the battery saver here so it only records when the doorbell is pressed and that may work for you but i like to see any notifications for parcels and stuff like that google's official figures say for a busy area the battery will last you about a month based on 25 to 30 events per day for a typical area about two and a half months battery based on 13 to 16 events per day and in a quiet area about six months which is about two to five events per day. But take those figures with a pinch of salt because there are too many variables to give a accurate amount of battery life that you may achieve based on your settings. So if you are gonna go for this battery version, do play around with the settings and get a nice balance between notifications, quality and battery life. If we go into events here, we should see what my zone is. I'm only using one zone. And you can see my zone one is currently set to notify me for people, packages, animals, or vehicles. I've done a lot uh, just to see how much uh, it will activate and trigger th within that zone and how much of the battery life will last. So you can see that's my zone there. Outside of this zone, history is off, of notifications are off. I'm using face detection here because it's cool when that works. And if we go back and we're gonna go into doorbell here so you can see i've got visitor announcements turned on and i'm not using a traditional chime as such i've got google nest mini speakers everywhere within the home as well as a couple of hubs so uh, those notify me via wi-fi when someone presses the doorbell so i don't have a traditional chime i've got those mini speakers and displays dotted around the home so that was the doorbell and i just want to show you within video you can actually specify the video history so as i said i've got a nest aware subscription so i've got 60 day event history and uh, at the box this can give you uh, three hours worth of event history absolutely free if you don't have a nest aware subscription and you can see here wake up sensitivity i've got this set to high you can set it to medium and low depending on if it's picking up uh, the the person for example walking halfway to the door or it needs the sensitivity of the wake up of the battery needs to be quicker so if it only catches half the event then you'll need to increase the sensitivity or if it's picking everything up completely fine you may be okay by ha just having medium or low but i like to have it on high and you can see here maximum event length you can set each event to record for a maximum period of time so i'm used to having continuous recording so i wanted to see what three minutes would look like and but you can have it as low as 10 seconds and if we go back a step and you can see video quality is set to max obviously if you want to maintain or have longer battery life you might want to drop that down to high and night vision i've got set to auto default you could turn that off completely if you wanted uh, as well as the status led is set to default uh, auto you can you could set that to low if you wanted to see how much the battery would last longer if you minimized all the settings but i wanted to see how long it would last pretty much on max settings for me and based on the events that triggered for my particular situation and we're going to go into audio here as well you can see i've got the microphone turned on you can talk two ways to whoever is on the other side of the doorbell and you can see i'm also recording audio as well as the volume on the camera to be maximum so again, your mileage might vary. You may not want to record microphone. You may need to have, uh, not need to have the, the volume to be as high, but I want to see how long the battery would last based on maximum settings. Because as I say, I'm used to continuous recording. The floor is not too bad, to be honest. I might use this again in another video. Do let me know in the comments section down below what you think of this Google Nest video doorbell battery version. As I say, I love the build quality and I love the image quality being captured from the device. The way it integrates in, to the Google ecosystem, if you're part of that ecosystem, is absolutely awesome. The things that irk me are only software related and can be fixed via a software update. As I mentioned previously, the fact that you can't continuously video record bothers me a little bit.
because they're allowing the customer to use it as a wired doorbell, why not allow the customer to also use continuous video recording if they want to? And the fact that you can't use the Nest video doorbell inside the Nest application is a bit of an issue as well. So as I said, I'm using two applications at the moment. Some of my older cameras are within the Nest application, the newer ones are within the Google Home application, which is a bit clunky, but again, can be fixed via a software update. Also, while, while I'm talking about software update, the fact that the cameras are, the newer cameras are only available within the Google Home application means I can't go onto my computer to see what footage I wanna download. You can only do it within the application on your device. Whereas Nest, you could go into the application on your phone or on a computer to download clips and see on a bigger screen what it's gonna look like and do sort of time lapses, that kind of stuff. You can't do that with this because it's only within the Google Home application. But again, all this can be fixed with software updates. So fingers crossed, Google, if you're watching, hopefully you can update those little tweaks, minor things, all software related. For a software company, the hardware is really, really good. And it's a bit weird that the software company is lacking, for the most part at the moment, in the software department, which is a bit weird. But as I say, software update, if you can fix it, absolutely awesome. I'm still in two minds whether or not I'm gonna keep mine or send it back because of the lack of continuous video recording as an option, because I like to have both. I'm weird like that. But anyways, remember, you don't wanna get short of data while you're out and about and you're using these smart devices, these internet of things. So check out Smarty Mobile for flexible, great value plans. Links will be down in the description box below. Thanks for watching, have a wicked day, and I'll see you next time. I got the drill. Look how big this thing is. Oh my god. It's freaking massive.